Yeah, I see palm tree. Shit. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. There is a way. There is a truth. And there is a life, and that life, that truth, and the way is in Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ alone. Jesus Christ, who is God, and God that is Jesus Christ. In the Holy Scriptures of the King James Bible, it is written that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All stand before God guilty and condemned. Every single one of us has something in common. Whether we be male, female, whatever race we be, we have something in common. We are sinners before God. All have lied. All have stolen from time to time. And we don't need to get into the big, big daddy sins. We are liars and we are stealers. And that constitutes us as sinners. We have been born of a woman. That constitutes us as sinners. As the family of Adam and Eve. Born into sin. And when we are sinners. And when we have been born into sin. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death. All will die. You were born in sin to die. And we do have a life in between. Some life, seconds, minutes. Some life, hundreds of years. And yet we are all born to die because we are sinners. And in our state of being sinners, God had wrought a work for us, His creation. And you see, we are created by God. We are a being made not by science, but by Creator. We are of God. And yet we have disobeyed God. We stand against God. And the fellowship broken between God and us is called sin. You see, God is a holy God. And God says, be ye holy, for I am holy. And there's a problem because we can't be holy. We can't be right by what we do. In our nature and in our being, we are unholy sinners before the wrath of God, according to John chapter 3, in condemnation. And there must be something to do before we die for our sinful state. And Jesus says, ye must be born again. Because your first birth is done wrong. It is done in sin. And that sin has been passed from your parents to you, from your grandparents, from your great-grandparents, your great-great-grandparents, going all the way back to Adam and Eve. And quite frankly, if you do not believe in Adam and Eve, you can't believe in
given God salvation because our sin came from Adam and Eve. So when your psychiatrist says it is your mother's fault, he is wrong. It goes back to your great, great, great grandparents. Eve. Not giving a bad name at all. The Bible says, Go in all the world and preach the gospel. Lift up your voice like a trumpet and declare their iniquities. If your church doesn't speak up, you're wrong. Because the Bible says, Preach the word. And the word is that Jesus is able to save your sinful soul that you were born into. When as a child, you stole that cookie. When as a child, you disobeyed your parents. When as a child, you told your parents lies. Those are three of the big daddy of all sins. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt honor thy mother and father. You are a sinner before God from your childhood. And it would be a waste of your life from your childhood to death to die in those sins when Jesus Christ has suffered and died already for you upon Calvary's hill. The older you get, the more sinful you get. And yet, one sin consecrates you as a sinner before God. And the sin that will put you into the gates of hell is the sin of rejecting Jesus Christ as your Savior. Adulterers do not go to hell. This one's really good. The sin of rejecting Jesus Christ will cast you in hell because you are a sinner. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So the hopelessness of death can be hopeful through Jesus Christ. Oh, no one wants to die. We'll pay all we can, the doctor and the surgeons, to keep us alive. And yet, death is sure. Death is more sure than Texas. Death is more sure as you being born. And even in America, before the baby's born, there's death. Being born of a woman, and I think that all classifies people here. Being born of your mother, I don't care how bad she was, I don't care how good she was. If you were born of a mother, you are born into sin, and you were born to die. Face it. When you walk into the insurance company and say, hey, I want insurance when when I die for my family, they call it life insurance. And yet it's death insurance. Because death insurance has already been entitled by Jesus Christ for suffering and dying for you. That you may turn eternal life. And that eternal life by the blood of Jesus Christ by the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. The same scriptures that say the wages of sin is death. And the same scriptures that have proclaimed the prophecies of Jesus Christ's life on this earth 33 and a half years. And the prophecies concerning the last 48 hours of Jesus. The same scriptures that proclaim the sufferings and the death of Jesus says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's all of us. And he was buried. And he arose again the third day 
according to the scriptures. So the scriptures that say, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, the scriptures, also says three days and three nights Jesus came out of that tomb under the power of God, under the power of Jesus, for Jesus is God. And God is Jesus. And you better stand upon your watchtower and watch for Jesus to come because he's coming back, the Bible says. As much as the Bible says in the scriptures the wages of sin is death, the Bible says that Jesus is coming back. As much as the gospel, Jesus suffered and died and buried and arose again, the Bible says he's coming back. And he's not going to come back as that little baby in the manger. He's coming back as a ferocious anger and lion of the tribe of Judah. And if you were to die before that time, you would not face the lion that's angry. You would face the wrath of God, the burning gates of hell for all eternity. Except you repent. And a popular term and a rightful term is return or burn. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. I have not changed the message in four years. I have not changed the name in four years. It is that Jesus saves and only Jesus saves. Mark down in my Bible in July will celebrate four years of preaching the gospel at this place, at this location. Four years about Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone selling you nothing. Because salvation is a free gift. Offering nothing but blood because water can't save your soul. Church attendance can't save your soul. Not of works, at least any man boasts. And the fact is that God so loved the world that he gave a charity. He gave to his creation because we're sinners. For all have sinned. We're not righteous, but the Bible says there is none righteous. No, not one. There will be nobody of the human race born of a woman that can properly step up to God and say, God, look how good I am. Now, many, many, many Americans think they're going to do that. They think they're going to walk up to God the Father and say, How about God, aren't you glad I'm here? And the words of Jesus, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Yo, man, Jesus, what are you talking about? I was in church every day, and I gave money to UNICEF, and I did, I did, I did, I did, and works cannot save your soul. But I was a member of this church. Membership in a church cannot save you. Only by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ you can be cleansed. God says, come unto me. All that are heavy, heavy laden. And you are heavy laden with sin. You are heavy with sin. One sin. One sin. One sin. I said one sin. And it's not even going to be the sin that you're going to think of. One sin will lay in you down for all eternity. And that sin is rejecting Jesus Christ as your Savior. That sin, and only that sin. There are good people in hell today. Because they rejected Jesus Christ as their Savior. There are vile, wicked, gross people of gross and wicked sins in hell today because they rejected Jesus Christ. And there are good
good people in heaven today. Sweet, nice people who have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. And there are more wicked and vile and cruel people in heaven today because they have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not who you are. It's not what you are. It is what you have believed while you were living on this earth. And to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. You to think about all the vile people that have been on this earth. And before they die, before their last breath, if they were to put their faith and belief upon the finished work of Jesus, the gospel that Jesus suffered and died, according to the scriptures, and was buried, and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. If they were to put their faith and belief in that, they're saved. They're saved as just as much as I'm saved. And if you are nice, and you are good, and you're very respected, and you're so proper, and you know what fork to use, and you've got the high society, and you're so wonderful, and you're so great, and you die without Jesus Christ, you will burn in hell with the rest of the good people. Hell is full of good people, and hell is full of religious people. Those that are washed in the blood of the Lamb of the Lamb Jesus Christ are those that enter into heaven. Behold the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. So you've got to have your sin taken away. See, it should have been properly. When you were born and the doctor took you and put you in your mother's arm, you have given birth to a sinner. Look at him. As cute as he is, he is a sinner. He will grow up to break your heart, the Bible says. Genesis chapter 3. That child will cause his mother sorrows and pain and suffering. Sinner. Sinner. And yet there was one man that was born into this world. Born of a woman. The virgin birth of the Lord Jesus Christ in Bethlehem. We all know that story. We overpower it with Baal's birthday instead of Jesus. That baby was 100% God and 100% man. And that baby was sinless. That baby never lied. He never stole. He never looked upon a woman to lust after in his heart. He never broke any commandments. He never had any idols. He never had any imagery. He did not have a religion. And that baby's Jesus Christ. Born of Mary. But I'm sorry to tell you, Mary can't do nothing. She was a wonderful, respected woman, say God called her to carry in her womb Jesus. But that is all. She has no power over heaven, over letting you in or letting you out. We're respectful that God used her, but in salvation she's useless. And she even says in Luke, God, my Savior. That's kind of interesting. But that baby that was born, God, man, sinless. He was born up. Uh, he was born to die too. I don't know what Jesus knew as far as infancy. I don't even know about my infancy. But I do know one thing according to the scriptures about Jesus Christ. The day that Jesus Christ was born in Bethlehem, he knew Abed 14th 
He was going to die brutality. He was going to die suffering. He is going to die being nailed to a cross. He knew that the day he was born. I cannot tell you when or how or you when or how you're going to die. But Jesus Christ bore knowing what date and what time, 6 p.m., he would die upon that cross. With all the agony. And yet there was no defeat in his death. There was victory to the world as he laid in that tomb. But when the angels proclaim, He is not here, He is risen. All the devils in hell trembled. Satan would tremble when he heard that he could not keep Jesus down. And the expression is, you can't keep a good man down. Well, there's no other human you can keep down but Jesus. Because he is seated at the right hand of the Father today. A good man is buried. And he stays in that grave. Why? Because the Bible says there is none that are good. So if you're not good, and to prove that you're not good, is you stay in that grave. Until God calls you. How's that? Oh, my pastor is so great. He's going to stay in that grave. My priest can absolve my sins. He'll stay in that grave because he's no good. Scripture with Scripture. But Jesus the good came out of that grave. Rolled that rock away. The original rock and roll was Jesus coming out of that tomb. It wasn't the fornicate in a back seat. Only Satan would take the original rock and roll and put it to sexual desires. And only Satan would give you a religion instead of the way, the truth, and the light. And if you have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, you are believing in the works of Satan. And if you have not put your faith and trust in the finished work of Jesus, you will die. I've already said that. You will die. But you will die in your sins. You were born a sinner. The day that you were birthed, you were birthed in sin. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish. It is a warning to us that you were born in your sin. The wages of sin is death, but don't die in your sins. There's a big difference. When you are born in sin, here you are living with occupation, with a hunger, with a thirst, with breathing, still a sinner. And the wages of sin is death. You're going to die. At the bottom of your to-do list, put death. Because <laughs> that's the last thing you will do as a human. The last thing you will do is you will die. And that is it. There is nothing else you can do after you die. So upon death, you cannot believe on God to be saved after death. You're dead. You can't do. There's nothing that people can do for you after you die. It is finished. It is done. And if you die without Jesus Christ in your sins and burning in hell, there is no escape. There is no 
method of getting you out of hell once you die without Christ. You see, in order to get out of hell, you've got to do something before you die. Well, that life is on the road to hell without Jesus, sir. No amen about it. And the Bible again says the wages of sin is death. But I'm not done with that verse. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. There is an eternal life. There is a blessed hope and that is only in Jesus. And that is to be done before you die. The problem is we don't know when we're going to die. Death could be right now on your footsteps catching up to you right now. You may not live to see a Sunday. You may not live to see tonight. Yep. She's an artist. I didn't know she was an artist. And if you were to put your faith and belief in Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. No, we don't want to sell anything. But once you die, that's it. Once you die, that's it. Unless you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and once you die, then it only begins eternal life. See, the Bible says, if you were to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and die, and the DJ was very annoying. That the Bible says, absent from the body and present with the Lord. It was like If you're to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. Look, you're still here. And be with the Lord forever. On the righteousness and the belief of Jesus Christ. Only. If you die in Christ, you're saved. If you die without Jesus Christ, you're damned. If you are washed in the blood of Jesus and die in Jesus, you're saved. If you die in your sins without the blood of Jesus, you're damned. In John 3.36, John the Baptist says, He that has the Son has everlasting life. He that has not the Son shall not see life but the wrath of God abiding upon him. And the wrath of God of hell is not God consuming you. It's the wrath of God forever and ever, forever to be ever burning in the lake of fire that burneth forever. That is some wrath. Imagine God rejecting you because you will not believe on His Son. In the eyes of God, to be right, to be holy, to be righteous, is in the merit of His Son, Jesus Christ. And it's not a religion. It is not water. It is not works. It's not attendance. It's not having your name in a roster somewhere. It is having the finished work of Jesus Christ alone. God says, let us come together. Let us. Though your sins be as scarlet. But hell is, hell is forever, man. We're trying to get you to believe on Jesus not to go to hell. It's good that you have fear. Use it. Faith and belief in Jesus. Sound good, partner. Is the only way for your eternal 
soul to have that blessed hope. There is no life after death rejecting Jesus. And yet there is eternal life without Jesus Christ in a lake of fire that burns forever. God, the Holy Spirit, in His own words, describing hell, said it is no life after all. I think that was a stone. And yet there is life after death. And without Jesus, it is hell. And the Holy Spirit said, that's no life to live. John. Yes, sir. Write down that eternal life is Jesus Christ. All right, he that has the Son has eternal life. John, put a semicolon. We're not done. What? He that has the Son, has not the Son, he that has not the Son, has not life, has not life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him, the wrath of, whoa. So when you die without Jesus Christ, you still got the wrath. That don't go away. When you die in Jesus Christ, the wrath is gone. And your name is written down in heaven. By Jesus Christ alone. You say, well, why do you do this week after week after week after week after week after week? Why do you try to infiltrate us? Why do you aggravate us? Why do you make us go crazy? Why do I gotta spend money to try to shut you up from that gospel? Why do you do this? Because Jesus is able to save and the Bible says go preach the gospel. And what better place to preach the gospel where there are people here to listen? Sitting, standing, walking, parking, leaving, driving by. Because everyone that can hear and everyone that can ignore the words of the preacher will be held responsible standing before God one day. There is life in the gospel of Jesus Christ. There is no life in scorning, rejecting, and not listening. Your life, according to the Bible, again, this is no threat. <laughs> by me, but God, your life will come to an end one day. It could be one day today. It could be your life could end in one hour. And if you continue to reject Jesus Christ, your afterlife will be the lake of fire that burneth forever. And you will not thank me later at the Great White Throne Judgment for preaching to you. It's simple. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Saved from what? There is a hell coming. It is burning today. There are people tormented in it today. And when you reject God, when you reject Jesus Christ, when you reject the finished work of Jesus, 
When you reject the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. When you reject that, when you reject Jesus saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. When you reject that, you will die and you will go straight to hell and you bypass, go and preach the gospel. See, if monopoly is a game of life, and it is, there's a corner that says go. And you are standing on that square right now, go. And you don't get $200 or whatever the inflation value of the game is today. When you stand on the monthly game of life and we are on go, that go is go in all the world and preach the gospel before they go on and buy more property and buy railroads and spend money and get money and buy this and buy that and get cars and go to jail. On the go, preach the gospel. That every player in the game of life that goes by will hear the gospel. And I can't save you. And I can't damn you. But I can give the message that will save your soul. And I have the message that will damn your soul. And that message is for you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. And if you believe what the Bible says, your name is to be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And you will have eternal life by Jesus. If you're to reject Jesus Christ, you will die in your sin that you were born in. And you will be cast off forever eternity in the lake of fire. So you can be born in sin, that's all of us. And you can die in the sin that you were born with, which I advise you not to, and go to hell. You can just live your life. No respect to God, the Bible, and Jesus. I advise you not to. But the Bible says many of you will. That's a shame. But few will get saved. That's our hope. That's why we're here for the few. Or you can be born in your sin. We all are. And you can come to Calvary to Jesus Christ and be washed of your sin as I had done 31 years ago. And you can have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And you will die. Salvation won't stop you from dying unless the rapture. And when you die in Jesus, saved, the Bible says, to be absent with the body, death, and then you're standing before Jesus' presence in the Lord. So dying in your sins, you wake up in hell. This place is not hell. There's a greater hell. Or you can die in Jesus and wake up before Jesus. That's your choice. And to be right with God and Jesus is by the finished work of Jesus alone. Yeah, you were born, you had no credentials, you had no nothing to do with being born. It had nothing to do with you. 
You had nothing to be born into sin. But what are you going to do with that sin that you are in now? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. 